Hello guys, um, you're welcome to this lecture. Uh, this is a continuation of actually the, um, the uh, empirical probability. I'll talk a bit about um, the law of large numbers. Um, I'll show you some exercises that you can try your hands on, and then I'll move on to uh, this room, some of these rules of probability, okay? So um, the law of uh, large numbers is, um, a phenomenon, phenomenon that describes the result of performing um, the same experiments a large uh, number of times, many, many times, okay? So according to this law, the average of the results that you get uh, by doing several experiments is close to what you expect theoretically, like, okay? Or, you know, the answer you get tends to be uh, closer and closer to expected by uh, when you do so many trials. Okay, that is, that is um, referred to as the law of large numbers. So, for example, um, when a coin is, is, uh, is tossed uh, one time, well, the probability of getting it head we know is, is one over two, right? It's half, okay. So does it mean that if I toss a coin 50 times, I'm going to get exactly 25 heads showing up, right? So not necessarily, um, because you're going to have some variations, probably get, you know, 24 heads, uh, 26, uh, and so on. Um, due to, of course, what is referred to as chance variations. Okay. But the law of large numbers says that um, if you increase the number of trials, so instead of 50, you do it a thousand times or 2,000, 5,000 times, um, the empirical probability of getting ahead will approach the theoretical value that, you, that is half of the number of trials in this case. Okay, you'll be approaching uh, the one half probability that, that you expect. Okay, so that is, that is, uh, that is the, law, the, law of, uh, the law of large numbers. And it is used, um, you know, to approximate, if you like, even um, um, discrete probability distributions to continuous ones. Um, we'll look at that later on. Okay, so you can you can try your hands on some of these exercises. All right, I'll just leave them on for you to look at um, and and try and try your hands on these different uh, uh, exercises. So we'll uh, move now to the addition rules of probability, okay? So where we we'll look at uh, mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive um, outcomes, all right? Um, so these rules uh, will help us to find probability of you know, two or more events, right? For example, in a large gathering, let's take this example, uh, large gathering of students, what is the probability that um, a person that is selected at random is a female or is a pharmacy student, okay? So in this case, uh, you actually have three possibilities. The person could be a female, uh, the person could be a pharmacy student, not necessarily a female, um, and the person could be both a female and a pharmacy student, okay? So, so you have you have most, multiple possibilities in this case. Um, a second one is this. Um, suppose that so the premise there's a caveat here. We are going to suppose that pharmacy students are not um, doing law at the same time. Okay, in other words, you're not registered in the pharmacy program and the law program all at the same time. And so um, in the same gathering, suppose there are pharmacy and law students. If a person is selected at random, what is the probability that the person is a pharmacy student? Okay, so now in this case, um, from the caveat, since you can't have a student being both a pharmacy and a law student, we only have two possibilities. That is the person could be a pharmacy student or a law student. And not both. Okay. Whereas in the first case, um, you can have both of them uh, happening at the same time. Okay. So we say that two events are mutually exclusive if they cannot occur at the same time. In other words, they have no outcomes in common. Then we say that they are mutually, mutually exclusive. 
Okay, so if they are mutually exclusive, the important thing is that, uh, uh, and you wonder if the, the probability of uh, one or the other, you can find the probability of one and just add it to the other one without uh, being concerned about um, an outcome that is common to both. Okay, that is the advantage of knowing this. Okay, so um, you can you can try these exercises. I'll, I'll do the first two and let you think about the um, the next two. We want to determine which events are mutually exclusive and which are not when a single die is rolled. Okay, so when you roll a die, um, the probability of getting an odd number and getting an even number. Are these mutually exclusive events or they are not mutually exclusive? Well, they are mutually exclusive. You can't get an odd number and an even number, all right? It's impossible to get that, so they are exclusive. But is there, um, is, it, is this, is this uh, mutually exclusive? Getting a three and getting an odd number. Well, a three is also an odd number. So these are not mutually exclusive events. Okay. All right. So you can you can try um, you can try the other ones. Okay. So we we'll apply we we'll apply um, these ideas um, later on to some solve some examples. So here's a definition: when two events, uh, let's say A and B, are mutually exclusive, then the probability that A or or is important or B will occur is given by this is the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay. So if you want this event or that event, the probability will be um, a sum. All right. Okay. So let's take um, a second example. Um, well, I think this is probably the first example in this um, is um, subtopic. A restaurant has three pieces of apple pie five pieces of cherry pie and four pieces of pumpkin pie in its dessert case, okay? If a customer selects a piece of pie for dessert, find the probability that it will be either cherry or pumpkin, okay? Well, um, straight away, we, we know that um, the events are mutually exclusive because you can have, um, um, you can have a dessert that is both cherry and pumpkin. Well, not in this case. In this case, you know, we are showing that they are separate. Um, okay, so how do you how do you do that? Well, since they are mutually exclusive, the probability of getting a cherry or pumpkin will be the probability of cherry plus the probability of getting a pumpkin. Well, so you need to find each of these and add them. There are 12 pieces of pie, right? Three of them are apple, five are cherry, four are uh, pumpkin. So if you find that, you have 12. Um, so to find the probability of cherry, there's a number of cherry uh, pies that you have all over the total. And to find that of pumpkin, you take four, you have four pieces all over 12. Add them, you get a probability of three over four. Okay? But it's important to note that the events are mutually exclusive. If they are not, then you have to apply a different formula to compute the probability. Okay, good. Um, if A and B are not mutually exclusive, then you will have to worry about uh, the intersection, right? The event that is common to both of them, you need to subtract um, A and B, okay? So basically the same thing, probability of A or B happening will be probability of A plus probability of B, Minus because they are not mutually exclusive, minus the probability of A and B. Okay, then you have to apply this. Okay, so um, here's an example a single card is drawn from a deck. Okay, we've seen this example before. Um, find a probability that it is a king or a club. Okay, it is a king or a club. So it's important that clubs also have, have a kink. So these events are not mutually exclusive, right? The probability of uh, getting a king is fine. We know we have four kings, right, for the four seats. Um, each of them has a kink. So 
club also has a king, so there's a king buried in here. That is why they are not mutually associated. Okay, so how do you find the probability of a king or a club? Find the probability of a king plus probability of the club minus the probability of the king of clubs. All right, you have to subtract the probability of the king of clubs. So the probability of getting a king, there are four kings uh, in the suit, so four over 52, because we have 52 cards. Clubs, there are 13 clubs, so you have 13 over 52 minus, there's only one king of clubs, so you have one over 52. If you compute that, you get four over 13 as your probability, okay? So when the events are not mutually exclusive, it's important that you subtract um, the event that is common to both of them. Subtract the probability of the, of the event that is common. Here's another one, another example. Um, in a hospital unit, there are eight nurses and five physicians, okay? Seven nurses and three physicians are females. If a staff, staff person is selected, find a probability that the subject is a nurse or a male. All right, the best way to do this is write down the um, distribution, right, in a tab tabular form like this. It helps you to, um, to make sense of all these, okay? So you have nurses, you have physicians. Okay, we are told that there are eight nurses in total and five physicians. Seven of the nurses are, uh, seven nurses and three physicians are females. So nurses, seven of them are females, which means one is a male. So that the total gives you eight, okay? Seven nurses, three physicians are also females. So if you have physicians, three of them are females, which means that two must be males because there are five in total, okay? So that will give you a total of five, all right? Because you have eight nurses in five positions. Good, good. So total number of females, you have 10. Males, you have three. Um, these are total nurses. You have eight here, total positions, five, and that will be 13 as well, okay? Very good. Okay, so the question says, if a staff person is selected, find the probability that the subject is a nurse or a female, okay? So if the events are not mutually exclusive, just find the probability of picking a nurse plus the probability of a male. But in this case, they are not mutually exclusive because a male can also be a nurse, right? Or the nurse could be a male. And so you have a point of intersection or a common uh, event, okay? So the probability of uh, nurse or male will be the probability of nurse plus the probability of male minus the probability of a male nurse, all right? So probability of a nurse will be how many nurses do we have? We have eight out of the total. Probability of a male, how many males do we have? We have three males out of the total minus how many male, male nurses do we have? We only have one maleness. So you subtract one out of 13, and the answer is 10 out of 13, okay? So because the events are not mutually exclusive, we have to be worried about um, this to make sure it's subtracting. All right, very good. So try your hands on some of these are uh, really directly um, applicable to the ones we've looked at. Determine whether the events are mutually exclusive and stuff. Um, Two, three, uh, you have three questions that you could try or answer. Okay, so um, in the next in the next uh, video, I will cover um, the multiplication rules and then conditional um, probabilities. Okay, that's what I'm going to do um, next.